How can anyone, whether they want to work in a language school or privately from their own laptop anywhere in the world, create a rewarding and impactful career teaching English as a second language, even if they are just starting out or have no teaching experience or ability? Hi, my name is Lynette Kim and here on the TESOL Talk podcast, I aim to answer that very question. Just like dress and grooming can say a lot about a person, how much they care or um, the impression that they're trying to give, so can, uh, funnily enough, a whiteboard presentation in the classroom have that same message for an ESL teacher. And it seems like an un... um, underrated tool, the whiteboard, but it is really important and it does say a lot. And there's a few things that you need to be aware of. Number one, everything that you put on the whiteboard um, that is related to the lesson and anything else that the students need to know should be up there before the lesson begins, well and truly, so that students come into the classroom, they're greeted by the teacher ready and waiting, and they can see that whiteboard and start looking at it and getting themselves mentally prepared for the lesson because it's the information that's already up there on that whiteboard. So the whiteboard is highly effective as a teaching tool, but it says a lot about you, the teacher. So you need to follow some basic um, guidelines. Presentation. The whiteboard should always be laid out very neatly and very orderly. If, you know, you see scrawled writing um, across the board, you know how someone will start on the left and then they'll start as they go towards the right, the uh, the words are going up towards the top. They're going vertically, not just horizontally. And so everything's out of alignment. That doesn't look good. So keep it all nice and neat. Writing should be legible always. So um, sometimes people write slightly in cursive and that supposedly hides mistakes, but that's wrong and you shouldn't write in cursive for ESL students. The other thing that's very important is writing should be in lowercase only, but capitalized and punctuated properly because this is something students need to learn and need to see. Uh, Another thing too is the whiteboard itself should be kept clean of clutter and smudges. So make sure you clean it really well. And, um, you know, you need to check the whiteboard before you start. Once you've prepared it, have a quick go over and check for any possible spelling mistakes or something that you've done. Now, another thing that's really good. So you've got your um, whiteboard and you're getting it ready. You need to think about having some sorts of drawings, illustrations. You can actually, you don't have to draw them by hand. You can put pictures up on the board with blue tag, um, or it could be if you're using an interactive whiteboard, you've gotten it off of a website. Um, But a good picture or some sort of visual is really good. And the center of the whiteboard should be a large space left blank for demonstration, explanation, Um, or any additional information that goes up during the lesson. It's really good too to have colour. So have a few different coloured whiteboard markers. I mean, you don't have to go crazy, but that contrast is really good for highlighting some key points and even just to look interesting. Now, the layout. There are lots of ways and everyone has different ideas about the layout for their whiteboards. But what you need to think about is some specific items the whiteboard should include. Number one, vocabulary bank. This goes without saying. So if you're teaching specific vocabulary part of the lesson, then you can put this either on the left in a little bank that you draw up or on the right. It doesn't matter. But as long as that vocabulary is there so students can see, oh, we're going to learn this vocab and they might not know it yet or they might recognize some, but it gives them an opportunity to look at it, perhaps even check their dictionaries for it. Now, another thing that you can have on your whiteboard 
boards is uh, like a notice or a reminder box. You can put anything up in that. It can also include homework tasks um, to remind students of what they need to do for homework. All simple, but still there. Um, if there's a grammar component to the lesson, then the grammar review box, put the grammar point that's being taught up onto the board and um, a demonstration of it or an example. You can also, some teachers do have a parking space and this is where they put up, it's a little blank box and they put um, questions that students ask that come up during the lesson. Now, this could be a question that would take the lesson too far off task and you don't really want to go off track at this point. So you say, yep, that's a great question, putting it in the parking spot and we will answer that tomorrow and everyone can research it. Even if students ask a grammar question that you can't deal with on the spot adequately, you need to look up and decide how you're going to explain or demonstrate it. Just say, look, that's a great grammar point. We're not dealing with this today, but we'll put it in the parking spot. I want everyone for homework to look at that point and you, the teacher, go home and you be prepared and come back tomorrow and say, right, in the parking space, what have we got? And then you can deal with it. So it's a great idea in that way. Now, other things, at the top of the board, I always like like to have the lesson topic. So what the lesson's about should go up the top. And then also beneath that, the objective of the lesson. So if they're going to be learning a particular skill, um, it might be, you know, about filling in forms. It might be um, about preposition of place. So directions, something like this. It'll always, the objective of the lesson and the theme is always in the course books. So getting that off of the course book page and putting it on the board. Yes, I know it's in the course book, but students come in and they see that theme and they see the objective. Oh, we're talking about this today and ah, I'm going to learn to do that. It's, it's good for them to see that this is all prepared for them and it's being treated as important because it's highlighted. Um, segmenting the board. So you have one side of the board that's like um, has the list of the pages in the course book that are going to be taught for the day um, and maybe even the activities um, like listed. So it might be pages 51 and 52 and up to exercise three or four, whatever, however that goes. Um, and you can also have an explanation on the board for any difficult points. So these things usually go on the outer edges of the board so that this is extra information that will guide the students. And then the middle is left because you might, as you're going through the lesson, you might have to write or put different demonstrations up on the board or have students come up and write on the board too during tasks. Now, the importance of having all of that makes you look professional, prepared, and that you care about the lesson and that students have a guideline to go from. Now, during the lesson, additional vocabulary could come up, you can always have that and write it into the vocabulary bank. So you're adding things in um, the grammar, you can add extra things into all of these things can be added in. And you've got that blank space in the middle of the board what you for what you need to do. Now, the last thing you really want to be doing is completely turning your back to students and writing on the board while they're sitting there doing nothing. So try and plan activities so that while they're doing a pair or a group work activity, something that's just come up for the next activity during that time, you write, you can have your back to the board, to the students then, and you can write on the board and have that ready for them and then wipe that off. And then for the next activity, do the same. So don't try to avoid at all costs having your backs to the students, trying to talk to them and teach them with your back to them while you're writing on the board. It's not great for you. And it's certainly very distracting for the students. So if you use the whiteboard correctly, it, it is a fantastic teacher. Aid. And you'll find that students will be taking photos of the whiteboard, they'll be taking notes, and you know, they love to show other classrooms if their teacher has a really nice, well laid out board. They feel very proud of the lessons and very proud of the work. And they actually, you know, keep these and, and put them into little folders of all their lessons to remember. So it does make oppression and it does say a lot about you as an ESL teacher. So make sure that you have a very well laid out, professionally looking, but fun whiteboard when you're ESL teaching. 